If you're anything like me, when you see Steven Zabana has a new interview with none other than the famed digital artist Dave Raposa, you click that damn video. You think to yourself, you know these guys are great artists. Sometimes funny. What are you waiting for? Click it. Brought it up to somebody the other day. Let's just say art right now, all the art that exists was only art from the Renaissance and before. Do you think AI would ever generate berserk? <laughs> Do you think it would ever make that series? It goes as no surprise that not a lot of artists are a fan of image AI, since the foundation of these images produced are sourced from other artists' published work across the interwebs. We can instantly see the problems with its use. In this video, I'm going to share how Dave approaches image AI from an out-of-the-box perspective and then reflect on it a bit to show how it can affect everyone. First off, if you don't know these guys, Dave Raposa, the guy on the left, is a fantastic artist, a quirky internet personality, and an overwhelming reason why a ton of artists today kicked it into high gear in the 2010s. He was one of the first people to really spark the fan art craze with his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles character paintings, and he was also one of the first to stream his art learning journey, which led to the formation of a community of fellow aspiring artists named the Crimson Daggers. I never got to see the heyday of these streams, but I did join in on the fun later on. One of my first videos was a vlog of me drawing a single comic page for a competition they were hosting. Steven actually goes through all this in the video, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. Head to Sabana's channel for that. Give him some well-deserved sweet views. So Dave knows art as well as the next professional, and he takes the relationship of the individual to their artwork pretty seriously. So seriously, in fact, that when Wizards of the Coast released a certain promo image, it sparked Dave to take drastic measures. Steven breaks it down here. Uh, January 4th, I believe it was, uh, Magic the Gathering tweeted out a marketing image. And uh, some fans quickly pointed out that it's obviously using uh, AI-generated elements. The Magic the Gathering account, they kind of doubled down on their post, uh, responding to a lot of the fans pointing out that it has AI in it, which the fans consider problematic because Magic has taken the stance in the past that they are not going to use AI content, that they want to honor the human creativity that produces their product basically across the board. They denied that it was made with AI, pushed on it, they denied it again, uh, and this doubling down spurred a pretty serious backlash um, from the fan community and the artist community at large. Give us what was on your mind when you saw that. It's the lying, first of all, which is very egregious and obvious and just silly. Where, like you said, it's like they had made it a big point to be like, we're about the artist first. That really was off-putting to me. Anybody with a brain who's ever seen AI would know that it's AI. If you're going to take that hard approach, saying that you put artists first and there should be somebody vetting these things before they go out so that you stick to your guns. So I just basically told them, he said like, and just like that, you know, like poof. I quit. Now Dave had the ability to essentially strike against this employer and someone with his skill set, it sent reverberations throughout the freelance art sphere. I want to quickly say that Dave and Steven do talk about the need for legal action and that there are some efforts out there to help protect artists right now. Apps like Glaze are trying to help by attempting to trick the image AI so that prompts won't accurately match the actual art that is trying to be referenced, essentially putting an anti-AI glaze on the artwork. Eventually, Steven gets to the issues with AI on the ground level of the individual. This is where it went. What's the difference between this thing learning and a person learning? And then there's the person who interacts with that machine through it. It's like, what are they losing by not being able to take on that path? Because like, you know, like there's like that uh, great Ford quote where he was saying they were like, uh, you know, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. he said yeah. but the journey you go through like so much stuff that you learn like if you're ignorant to it all you think it's the output you know everybody's heard that it's the journey it's not the end it's, it's like everybody knows these things it's like but what is what does that mean it's like well as a personal journey through learning art it's like you grow as a person you understand self-discipline it's like you understand how much of yourself you have to give there's and then you find out things about yourself like who am i really when i'm pushed up against these things that feel almost impossible by the time you get to the end of that you're this holy formed being that's been crystallized into you it's like you become this different thing 
there's so much there in any path that you choose. It's not just art. It could be martial arts. It could be, you know, any career that you choose that you're passionate about. You go through those stages. And to rob somebody of that whole creative process as if like the output was the point. It's very silly. If new artists coming into this, if they can't sit down, go through this and then grow to becoming this version of themselves like I talked about, it's like you're robbed of that if those people don't get a foothold and have the ability to start working. We're never going to get these new styles and we're never going to get, it's like you're just going to create this weird plateau. So here Dave makes two huge points and that is that the journey or the process matters just as much or more than the end result. When you think of any meaningful part of your life, like raising your kids or going on a trip with your friends, the meaningful part is not when your kids are all grown up and moving out or when like you're finally back from the trip. The meaningful part is the moments that make up the journey or the progress in between. So in the visual medium, AI is the destination. Even though our minds really like the destination, or in this case, the final image that the generator spits out, what is missed is in the process. And it's way more important on a human level. The second point is the artistic plateau. The plateau that Dave brings up here is the cap or the ceiling of anything new. Since AI only mimics the art and doesn't really create it, AI becomes the end of art. I think Steven calls it the apocalypse. I think about it the same way I think about reaction videos, ironically like the one I'm in right now. Imagine that YouTube started incentivizing reaction videos over all the other types of videos by compensating creators at a higher rate of maybe ad revenue. Eventually a ton of creators would skip making the more time consuming videos with more original content and only make these reactions. Eventually YouTube would become an endless loop of reactions reacting to reactions. So now you see the connection. AI will become some sort of artificial mimicry that's just going to mimic more mimicry. Dave then gives this example of Berserk. I brought it up to somebody the other day. Let's just say art right now, all the art that exists was only art from the Renaissance and before. Do you think AI would ever generate berserk? <laughs> Do you think it would ever make that series? Do you think it would get there? Do you think like the styles would iterate enough for it to eventually become this manga series? Like, do you think that? It's like, cause I don't. Dave's point is that AI would probably make some baller renaissance style that hits on all the pinnacle of those themes and rendering, but it would plateau then and there, making storytelling, concept art, new render styles, and unique viewpoints of today impossible. I really do urge you to go listen to this interview as it's inspired me to rethink this controversial topic and value human effort in a new way. So that's it for my thoughts on the subject. I want to thank you champions for watching this far. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and let me know in the comments your thoughts about Image AI. Be good, everybody.